Good evening. My name is Julie Hiroto. Welcome to Blue Line Arts. Uh, tonight is a very exciting night for us. I'm here to present two remarkable artists that we are very lucky to have and in our region. And that is Maya Lowe and Greg Condos. I want to tell you just a little bit. Oh. <laughs> we are really honored to have both of these fabulous artists here. I hope you've had some time to see a little bit of their work, both in, uh, in this area of the gallery as well as this area of the gallery. And don't forget to check out our pop art show that is in the rear gallery. And then, of course, in our Eli Edith Road Children's Gallery, we have some remarkable children's work as well. But I'd like to introduce you first to Maya Lowe. She's from Rotterdam, Holland. Is that right, Maya? Where did you go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> she's, she studied and worked in South Africa, Europe, and the U.S. And you have a studio in South Africa, I believe, isn't that right? Where she spends uh, much of her time painting, both here as well as in South Africa. She has a love for painting of Northern California landscapes. And I was delighted when I had the opportunity to talk to her about doing this show. And we talked about it about a year ago in preparing for this special night. So I'd like to introduce Maya Love. Dear friends, will you stop that? <laughs> my dear, dear friends for being here. And I see a couple of my clients here too. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for coming here. This means so much to me. Um, I have to obviously say thank you very, very much to Julia Rota and the Blue Line Gallery, the board members who so graciously offered to have me here and I am so honored and delighted to be showing at this wonderful gallery. It is a most magnificent space and I am truly um, honored and delighted. I also wanted to just say thank you, a big thank you to Tony Natsoulis. I don't know if he's here tonight, but he did a magnificent job. Ah, oh, there he is. What kind of shoes have you got on tonight, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> he spent three, three days hanging the show and getting everything prepared for tonight and thank you very much, him and his team were magnificent um, and then Mr. Condos oh gosh, where is he? Oh! <laughs> he's wonderful I'm in total awe of this great artist and I was fortunate enough to 12 years ago show with him at um, downtown Sacramento at the Art Foundry, and I was in awe then, and I am still in awe of your work, Mr. Pondos. Um, my husband, Etienne, is here. Yay. He is not only my champion, but he is also my best art critic. <laughs> he is very brutally honest. He's also recently um, sort of um, had a new profession other than architecture and decided to publish a book of my work, which is currently <coughs> on show here. This book is available in the little shop around the corner if you are interested. Anyway, thank you, Ed, for doing that. That was wonderful. Julie, just ask me very quickly and briefly to sh say a little bit about my work. Um, and then uh, I would have to start about 20 years ago, arriving here in Placer County and falling in love with the rolling hills. Uh, obviously very different to the tiny, tiny country I was born in, the Netherlands. And then studying and working in South Africa where I learned to actually enjoy these big, big spaces, which I then found a new challenge here in California. And I'm so, so in love with it. As you see, I 
I don't think I'll ever get sick of painting it, so bear with me because I'm going to be doing this for a long time. <laughs> um, my method, just very quickly, I'm a studio painter. I paint from sketches and maybe sometimes a photograph for added uh, information. But largely I start with five, six canvases and move along. Out of the six canvases, three usually bomb. Totally. And I can't tell you why, but they do. The one day I have a good day in the studio and the next day is absolutely devastating. There's no other word for it. I, I, don't, I still don't understand. I never know what a work is going to look like. At the, at the concept of the, of the idea, I think I know what it's going to look like, but, but it doesn't materialize that way. And I cannot begin to tell you why, it just happens. It's something to do with the heart and the feelings and the emotions and everything else that goes into it. I do paint with a lot of paint, with a lot of color, a lot of texture, and thereby allowing the light to bounce off the almost 3D effect. Anyway, um, I, I uh, think I've said enough. <laughs> it's time to go to my wine. <laughs> but, but please, please feel free to ask me any questions. I should very much like to talk with you and answer anything that you might pose for me. Thank you very much, and thank you very much to everybody for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Maya. It's a delight having you here. Uh, next, I wanted to introduce one more artist from this area. Some of you may have been here last year when Greg joined us for uh, his opening show, and we are delighted to have him back. Talking to you. <laughs> it just so happens that we were able to work very closely with the Cocker Museum, Cocker Art Museum, on this, and having Greg's work in retrospective at the Cocker Art Museum, and have a satellite show here at Blue Line along with Maya's work. So we're very grateful to you, Greg, and very grateful to you, Maya, for considering doing this and joining us once again. And uh, so I wanted to introduce Greg Condos. He's a West Foremost landscape artist. He's painted, painted imagery from Yosemite, the French countryside, Greece, and we're pleased to have him here tonight to talk a little bit about his work and share some of his stories about working on the book, which, by the way, Scott Shields, I saw you here. Where are you? He's waving very low. Who helped edit and create and write the book. So thank you very much, Greg Condos. This isn't a war injury. <laughs> uh, I have been a veteran, a very proud veteran, and I believe in everything that they've done for us and will do in the future. Am I supposed to hear it? Hello. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, really, to be honest with you. Too many things are happening all at one time. And uh, I get up in the morning and the phone rings and all of a sudden, don't forget, you're going to have to be here. And, okay, okay. And uh, I don't give my wife enough credit. She takes a lot of this off to my shoulders. But, uh, Mario, thank you, Mario. <laughs> but the... Uh, the only thing I want to tell young people, I like to talk to young people. Not because I'm old. It's <laughs> uh, because, you know, they're, they're underway. And uh, sometimes they don't get guidance. The schools aren't giving it. Believe me. You've got to create your own little school. And I've done that all my life. I'm self-taught, although I've been to different colleges.
campuses and so forth. I've done a lot of teaching all over, and uh, I find, I'm really convinced that you're the teacher. Who is that person up there standing anyway, giving out, hey, that's not good, that's good, and they don't know what the heck they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> You'll know. You know, it'll come around eventually. And if it doesn't, then uh, you're not paying enough attention. So, uh, I should be in New York, really, as a painter. That's where the big money is, but that doesn't look interesting. <laughs> but, uh, it's fine here. <laughs> All right, I'll prove it. I taught. My first yearly salary was $3,000. Big deal. They do that in one day now. But the, uh, the interesting thing is when I can get a student, I'm a student, I've got some titles, but I prefer the title student, because I'm still learning. And that gives me the right to make mistakes. <laughs> so if I didn't say I was a student, that means I'm perfect. But I'm not. And I do paint every day, practically. My wife, every time she goes out that door, she comes back, she finds me laying down. And I just lay down. <laughs> I can't win. Uh, then I have to show her my fingers or something, where the paint is. But uh, it's hard work. But I have a, a little quote, why paint, why live? Understand that one? Well, that's what it is. My future is my uh, wife, my kids, and my work. And if I uh, lose one, I've lost everything. So that's my attitude. Getting back to the New York thing, sure, I could have been back there and probably very successful as a landscape painter. But I, I like California, and uh, <laughs> they say money isn't everything, is it? <laughs> uh, I'm better than a lot of them. I have an ego. I'm a damn good painter. <laughs> you don't believe me? Ask me. <laughs> so, you know, we can... I see, now I've got you guessing. <laughs> Where is he? But that, that's the way I used to teach school. You got to get up there and put your chin up there and get it hit a couple of times. And when people say, uh, "Are you a good painter?" You say, "Damn right, you are. I am a good painter." And so then let them find out. But if you sit back, nobody's going to look at you. There's too many artists out there today. There are a dime a dozen. And remember, art is actually held together by the economy, the stock market. It's a luxury. It doesn't put food on the table. So therefore, while you're going to school, you pick up a major and the minor should be equal. In case the major doesn't come through, you work on the minor. <laughs> and then the minor somehow kicks in the major eventually. But don't expect the parents to put you through for a hundred years. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so you've got to be, you know, up, up there in front. And uh, you never force your art on people. Let them beg for it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what my success is? Uh, not the schools. To me, schooling is it's good for everything else but art. You have to find that art. The school will not find it. The teacher is probably terrible. <laughs> and uh, then what are you learning? Nothing. You've got to feel it. I, 
don't want you up here. <laughs> Want me to go home? <laughs> Scott here? Yeah. Where is Scott? We were lucky enough to have. Where are you, Scott? Author, the curator, assistant director of the Crocker here tonight. <laughs> I like this guy. He's pretty good, you know. <laughs> he does things that I can't figure out. He can add. I don't know how to. <laughs> and subtract. This is Scott Shield. And I think the best career we've had at the Crocker. Yay! Yay. That's the nicest thing he said to me in a long time. <laughs> Because our, we have the Crocker Show, A Touch of Blue Landscapes by Gregory Condos opening on Sunday um, to everyone. And so we've had like four days in a row together, and he says, I'm getting sick of you. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's wonderful. I'm so glad that the Blue Line is participating and, and making a celebration because I don't know if anyone said it, but Gregory turned 90 on April the 2nd. <laughs> So we've got not only the, this show, we've got the Crocker exhibition, there's also a drawing show going on at Sacramento City College, um, and so it's sort of a community-wide celebration, and I'm really excited and happy that everybody's come forward, because I, I don't want to build your ego up anymore, but Gregory does deserve it, he really does, and this is the first major catalog that, that really has ever been done. There's been smaller books, and he's been in a lot of books, and he has his work in collections all over the United States, but he's never had a major catalog, and it's... It's for sale here tonight, um, and and so you can you can buy it, and he'll sign it for you. And if you take it home and want to sell it on eBay, you know, that's, <laughs> that's up to you. Um, <laughs> so, but I just want to thank thank Julie and Tony for, for chipping in on this 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 show, and I also want to thank Gregory and Monty because. They've been both so instrumental in all of these projects and going crazy in the last couple of weeks. But our book project started about two years ago, and he handed me a box of 400 transparencies, none of them labeled. Um, <laughs> we started that way, and we just sort of did detective work, and a lot of that detective work was money, um, calling people and trying to figure out who owns what and getting it into the book and getting the title correct and all of that. So it's been a joy. It's been an honor and a privilege. Um, Never thought I'd be working with him. Uh, and I'm really, <laughs> I'm really glad that I had the opportunity, and I mean that sincerely. So thank you all, and I'll turn it back over to you. Okay. Uh, this is aimed at, at young people, and uh, my parents came from Greece. They were immigrants, they got to this country and they worked hard, went through Ellis Island, ended up in Sacramento, actually via the railroad, working on the railroad, not my mother, my father, <laughs> uh, and they couldn't speak English, very little, and uh, they raised three of us, uh, I raised two, uh, I have a boy and a girl. Not, they're uh, pretty old now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm proud of both of them. Very proud. And uh, you who are parents out there, if your kids want to be an artist, don't discourage them. Because uh, you don't know, maybe that little body is going to turn into something that will make other people happy, aside from you as parents. Uh, I went to war. I went to, on the carrier on, in the Pacific. I came home. My father didn't think I would. He was in World War I. He got shot up and everything. And he said goodbye as if it was for the last time. When I came home, I surprised him. <laughs> and, uh, Wonderful parents, believe me. 
And uh, I said to my dad, I'm going to go to school. I have the GI Bill. He never, I don't think he ever saw a painting of mine, to be honest with you. They didn't know anything about art. They were too busy raising the two kids, the three kids. Two kids. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he said to me, now that your home, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go to school. He said, what are you going to take? You know, he thought doctor, lawyer, you know, and that stuff. He was a barber. And uh, I said, Dad, I'm going to take up art. <laughs> <laughs> so he looked at me and he says, go for it. That's all. Go for it. And here's a guy working seven days a week, 17 hours a day practically, raising a family, making everybody good, happy. A yo-yo, he made me a yo-yo one time, and it was from a spool of thread and a string. And I thought it was a real yo-yo. But I'll never forget it, you know? And that's all he could afford. But then, my son, my brother turned out to be big man in government. He had three, actually here's a, I'm trying to tell these young people, it's not that difficult, it is a beautiful way to grow. He ended up with uh, Lieutenant Colonel, I guess. He, three dis discharges, Navy, Army, and Air Force, honorable. Uh, big math, brain. I can't even count on two fingers. And so, you know, he made me proud. I, and uh, he's gone. And then here I ended up with a little artist running around. And uh, the sad thing is my parents didn't really know what, what we were doing because they didn't know the language. They knew, they knew how to raise Kids, so they knew that the church was there to pray for, for their health and whatever. We're too busy today to do a lot of that work. I know I have to cut it. <laughs> we have this problem at home. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm going to sit there. It's the same way at home. <laughs> okay. Paul, Paul Tebow said, you two are going to get married. Where's mine? Who's going to turn? Well, who's you. going to take turns? It's an honor to Thank watch. you. <laughs> There's a cute little girl right here. She's going to grow up and be what she wants to be and be good at it, right? Thank you. Us. 
And so I hope you all take that opportunity to get your book signed by both of them. And Scott will also. And Scott, oh yes, that's right. Scott, Scott, will Scott will is the author of Briggs' book. Not catalogs. We have lots of catalogs. This is a book. <laughs> Wine and appetizers that we have, as well as my egg rice. Um,